Jolene by Dolly Parton from 1973. One of the best country songs ever written, largely due to the amazing guitar work by two guys, Wayne Young and, no, Chip Young and Wayne Moss. We're gonna break down those two different guitar parts. For the longest time, I just, really, I just thought this was one, one guitar through this song and I couldn't work out what he was doing and how he was playing the notes that he was playing, but it's because there are two guitar tracks going on here. Thanks to another YouTube channel called Ask Zach, who was uh, doing a kind of an expose. He does a lot of these kind of background Nashville stories on, on recordings. And he ha he put up the master tracks, the master recordings of Jolene, including the two guitars, which, which when isolated, you can actually really tell a lot more clearly what's going on and how brilliant these two tracks are combined to make this great song. The first guitar that you hear in this song is a nylon string guitar played by Chip Young. And it's a, it's a brilliant picking arrangement. It's a little bit trickier than what you would first imagine. I'm gonna take you through a couple of different levels in order to get to the original Chip Young recording. I'm gonna start with the Chip Young recording and then I'm gonna kind of work backwards from there. So if you want to start from an easier level, scoot down to the, uh, whichever way it is on the line, go to the marker that's that's for uh, the level one, if you like. I'm gonna put these into three levels. So you can start with level one, move up to level two, and then level three is the actual Chip Young part. He plays in the intro, then into the first half of the chorus. The second half of the first chorus, Wayne Moss comes in with a steel string guitar, and, and the nylon strings pan to the right, and the steel strings pan to the left, and so, when the steel string comes in, the nylon part changes a little bit, it simplifies in order for these parts to blend. And then in the verses, what I've done is transcribed the Wayne Moss steel string guitar part because that is kind of, that, that takes over and is kind of the main identifiable guitar part for the verses. So I've tabbed them both out. I've tabbed out Jip Young's intro and his version of the chorus and then I've put Wayne Moss's version in the verses. And the song just basically alternates between verses and choruses and does it, you know, several repeats and then moves to a chorus and several repeats and then moves to back to a verse. So you've got everything you need there. Because it's like two extremely talented, seasoned players, they vary little bits and pieces throughout the song. So little bits of rhythmic displacement and different strings played at different times but this is the nuts and bolts and an accurate representation of the two parts that, that you hear at the beginning of the song and throughout the song. Let's get started, download your chart. Um, it's, it's in a one page simplified tab, but it's dead on balls accurate and it's a fantastic guitar piece. Two fantastic guitar pieces really. Let's go. The intro. I'm gonna play it through really slowly and point out a couple of things along the way which make this you know, which take it to another level as opposed to your, just your regular Travis picking kind of piece. So you've got an A minor. First of all, capo on the fourth fret. It's in the key of C sharp minor. So we're doing an A minor shape on the fourth fret with a capo. And we start with this A sus two shape. And then when you get back to that A string again on the fifth little um, quaver beat or semi quaver beat, that gets cut short. What he's doing, he's playing this with a thumb pick and he's really kind of attacking the strings quite quite strongly. So that's part of the sound. He's really kind of really digging in and really playing this hard. To get this down, you need to play it softly first and get control of it. So we're gonna go through it really slowly. Again, we're doing that Travis picking, so your thumb's going back and forth on the bottom two strings. Lifting off, sometimes he does G, D string there, sometimes he does B, D string there. It doesn't really matter which one you use, I've tabbed them out both different ways in the first two bars of your intro. Here is the first little part that makes it really kind of interesting. He grabs three notes here to do that with. 
Everywhere else he's kind of only playing two notes maximum at the one time, but on that beat, he's, he's playing the thumb on the A string, the first finger on the D string, and the second finger is taking the B string. And I know he's doing that because if you listen very closely to the bass notes in this part, you hear both of these notes at the same time, as well as that one. So again, there it's, it, it feels a little bit strange with your right hand to grab three notes all of a sudden and then going back to your your pattern but that's what he does after those four bars of the intro he moves into the chord progression which is a minor c g a minor g back to a minor how he picks it is like this part that you know sends it into the next level he, he does this he plays your bottom note your open D and your third fret B string but then he gets down here and I didn't even hear this until I listened to the master tracks isolated that he starts on the one slides up to the two but when he slides to the two he plays at the same time the G the open G string so chorus that's your chorus then halfway through that chorus because it's a it's a six bar pattern that repeats two times the second time through that six bar pattern is when Wayne Moss comes in with the steel string and plays this brilliant part again same chords capo on the fourth fret That's the picking pattern that he uses through most of this part, but he's, again, he does a couple of little embellishments that make this, you know, sound even more brilliant. Just two bass notes with your thumb, nothing else, and then back to the first bass note when you do those three notes coming down through the chord, so. And back up to that B string on the last beat. Okay, that's the first bit. C. Instead of going to a G, he goes to a B, which is really like, you know, it's part of the G chord, but he's, he's playing a, a B note. It can kind of look like a, an E minor seven without the bass, the root, or you can call it a G over B, whatever you like to call it, he's using that position there. And from the C, what he does with the A minor that makes it really interesting. Just that little hammer on on the G string to the second fret. Then he moves down to the G and does this. And then back to the A minor doing that same riff. version in the verse part. Like I said, the nylon string part kind of backs off and simplifies a little bit in order to, to blend beautifully with that in the verses and the choruses from there on and, and henceforth. But that's the, that's the nuts and bolts of the song. They're two really, really great guitar pieces and I hope that was helpful to you. I couldn't find anyone else online that had actually done this as accurately as I am hearing it through the master tapes so um, I'm pretty confident I've got it right if you disagree let me know and we'll try and work it out now we're gonna just step back a bit and take you through a couple of uh, basic steps to get up to that kind of level finger picking because it ain't easy but it's really worth it the first thing you need to do in order to get 
going towards this finger picking pattern is just get your thumb alternating on the bass strings a la Travis picking style. So get your A minor shape, again with the capo on the fourth fret, and go A string, G string, so A string with your thumb, G string with your first finger, D string with your thumb, B string with your second finger. So A, G, D, B, A, G, D, B, A, G, D, B, thumb, finger, thumb, finger, thumb, finger, thumb, second finger, thumb, finger, thumb, finger. Get that. Get that going nice and smoothly so you could talk to someone and hold a conversation without messing up your picking. Then move through the chords. C. Obviously your thumb has to come over to the E string for that first bass note, but then go back to the D string for the second bass note. Like that. Level one, done. Level two is alternating this, this finger picking pattern just a little bit, just breaking it up a little bit and we start to, to you know, make things sound a little bit more interesting. So instead of going five, three, four, two, five, three, four, two, we're going five, then four and two together, back to five, three, four, two. So I'll play that slowly so you can follow it and, and do it on the tab. Again, get that down so you can just play it automatically. Move through the chords. going that's going to do a lot to make this song sound more interesting now the other little bits the other embellishments that that come and really make this um, piece amazing and, and very very skillful are taken care of at the beginning of the video so jump back there now that you've got these basic picking skills going and knock the rest of it off thanks for watching mm -hmm.